Hello, and welcome to Dan and Ian Have Questions. Are you interested in people's unique hobbies, passions, and how it all gets started? Well, you're in the right place. These two, like many of you, know a little bit about a lot and always have questions. Let's sit back, relax, and enjoy as they find out what makes everyone so interesting. This is the Dan and Ian Have Questions podcast. Hey guys, how's it going? This is uh, Dan and Ian, and uh, we have questions. And today we have is actually a Halloween special. Lightning bolts, lightning bolts. All right, don't forget to add that on there. It's yeah, a special it's all post. Okay. Yeah, if I don't, then they will really won't. No, I won't. I won't. It didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this time around, it's just uh, Ian and I, and uh, we just want to talk to each other about, you know, like what horror movies that we like suggest, and if we have any like any cool memories of uh, at times that that happened during uh, Halloween. And uh, we also have a, a little bit of a, of a bonus. Uh, we have uh, uh, James from from the account uh, Horlock Nightmare Gallery. We just, just we asked him actually a couple extra questions. He was nice enough to ask uh, a little bit later on. And uh, so we're gonna, just going to get right to it. And uh, so, Ian, yes, I, have sir. A, I have a quick question. Uh, so when you when you when you get into the, the Halloween spirit, the what what movies do you like to like sit back and and just get into like that mood that feel um it really comes down to and i i brought it up i think on the james podcast is uh i'm i horror movies like i like going and watching straight up just scary movies but i am a goofy dude and <laughs> i've always had a you know comic sense you know nothing taken too seriously so i've always loved uh the evil dead franchise Mm -hmm. So any of those, uh, really, I mean, I got multiple versions, uh, you know, Blu-rays, DVDs, I had VHS at one point, all the, they, they disappeared, but right. that's one of those ones kind of like Star Wars. I keep buying newer copies and variations of the same film, but, uh, Evil Dead's like the, per, mainly Evil Dead 2, uh, is the one I will go back to. Army of Darkness is fun, but that's kind of more like yeah. an action movie with hor right. horror set pieces right evil deads you know it's it's kind of groundbreaking the first movie was groundbreaking but uh the second movie more so i mean just with who they had working on it but i that's usually one that i'll go back to is i'll say evil dead 2 because that's i think that was the first gory movie i ever showed campbell because i knew it was so over the top and right. so comical that I think that's what ruined horror films for him after that to where he's like, no, <laughs> it doesn't scare him. It's gotta be like ghost spooky, you know, right. Creepy imagery, like things creeping in the background to actually like scare both of us to like, right. you know, but when it's just like slasher movies and stuff, usually it's just like, Oh, okay. Let's all right. Cool. Oh, he killed him that way. All right. That was all right. <laughs> yeah. they're not, they're not completely out of ideas. <laughs> what about yeah, you, you, man? Know, yeah, well, you know, actually, uh, uh, more recently, especially like this this year, I've been really curious about older horror movies. So like like fifties and sixties. Oh, really? You know, like what? Like the like the the flavors, the taste of what society was back then, and how did they? What what did they felt that was they were scary to them? And uh, there were two movies that that actually my wife and I sat down and watched. There was the the uh, Vincent Price House of Wax movie, which was like I think that was 1953. Oh, that's the one with Paris Hilton, right? Uh, well, no, no, not the, oh, no, 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 that's, no, that's the more recent version. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, Paris Hilton from 1953. Marilyn um, Monroe, she's a time traveler. <laughs> but, but I I thought that was actually I it, it held up. It it wasn't like obviously it, it wasn't like any of the jump scares or anything like that the suspense was was probably there 
but like i i really appreciated the the quality of the makeup effects like some of the the props that they had in the movie too like the the actual house of wax themselves like the wax figures mm -hmm. they look so real but that was like kind of like the premise i don't know should i should i, should I spoil it i don't know should i should i do uh, that? you can't spoil a uh what is it i've heard this many times it's it's a 60 year old 70 year old movie now <laughs> yeah yeah i guess you're right I and and it's right. had it's had at least one remake in between there yeah exactly so if if you if you don't want to hear the the big reveal or whatever then uh, you know close your ears yeah, skip for forward uh, uh yeah. one minute i don't know <laughs> yeah one minute yeah but basically what it is is that he um he is a, a passionate artist. Vincent Price is the passionate artist. He makes these uh, historical characters through uh, through the years. And his partner, business partner, was really greedy. And this was like set in like the turn of the century, um, you know, the the turn of the twentieth century. So, you know, obviously it's super old. So it's like you know, this guy was going to make more money if he burned the place down for the insurance than actually if it actually made any money like right then and there so he burned the place down and he burned the guy vincent price character in with it but he survived and you know i think it was like three years later um you know vincent price character is actually going around murdering these people and he takes their body from the morgue and makes wax figures out of them in that way so it's like oh this like incredible realistic look and everything but the weird thing is is that like even before that some of the characters that he made through through the wax they looked actually real so it was like i was kind of caught off guard figuring like this is what he's been doing like all his life but in oh. reality it's something you know <laughs> you're, you're like using a, really a uh, you're using a modern day sensibility with movies and and uh, uh them wanting to expand and <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you're like yeah. oh this is this is what he's been doing for, for forever look at that and they were like no we just used the same effect but this time yeah. we told him it, it, it was real people <laughs> yes yes real people this time and uh there was a big surprise about this this was actually uh charles bronson's like first film oh really yeah there's a there's a big bulky looking guy and i'm like i that guy looks like so familiar and then i i looked i had to look on imdb and it was him it was vincent price i'm i'm sorry uh <laughs> charles bronson it was charles bronson that was that was on there and i'm like oh my god i'm like he's so young in this so, yeah <laughs> I, but that's what i like uh, like even uh, even I when just, they were young they still looked old though it's probably because we've yeah. only seen them as old but it's like they could have been my age but they look like they're 60 still <laughs> you know, yeah, in know. My head. yeah exactly exactly it i always do this too too it's uh every every old old black and white movie that i that i watch i always look at the you know the uh, co-stars and see if like oh yeah like 20 years later they're like a big star or like you know 10 years later they're in this movie but you know nine times out of ten typically i don't really see anybody that like that actually blows up later you know down the road years later so it's just kind of like when i'm like ah oh. Oh well, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, uh, but hey, did you have any other suggestions that uh, people should check out? Um, I mean, I I not really th throwing out, but you're talking about Vincent Price and those older movies. I do remember for the first time I was working on a uh, buddy's uh, music, uh, well, project for a live stream, and we we're gonna have um, stuff getting cut in, you know, like have them fade in and out but we ended up just having it play on a projector on like the side wall like while they were playing but it was is it uh, the last man on earth oh yeah yeah that's of it yeah exactly uh actually it was from a uh, from a book called i am legend okay that's right that's where it came from okay that's i remember hearing that yep. come up now when that movie came out and there's there's a couple of remakes on that so there's there's the vincent price movie which is the last man on earth and then there's the Charl uh, charlton heston film which is the omega man Oh, and then, that's right. And, yep, and then then it was the Will Smith movie, I Am Legend. So okay, and yeah, yes. and, and that one was kind of after watching, I was like, holy crap, they got away with like what to me seems like imagery in a movie of the fifties, or you know, that had to that had to been fifties, early sixties, right? I mean, I could uh, look this up. The, Last Man on Earth. Last Man on Earth was yeah, I think it was. Uh, hold on, let me let me take a quick look. Um, you keep talking while yeah, I yeah. No, it was it was um research. for whatever time it was. It seemed startling some of the images in it, like just how yeah. visceral some of the stuff was. That I'm like, wow, 
I mean, it's nothing like mind blowing, but just thinking about the the time and standards and practices, you know, the way things were handled with TV and you know censorship and stuff. I was surprised right. that just some, even though it's nothing, it's just weird. Like some of the imagery, like they're throwing bodies down a hill, like a pile, you know, there's just a pile of bodies. They're throwing dead bodies down in a ditch. Like it's these right. guys with gas masks and an army truck just pulling people out and chucking them down a hill. And it's like, Ooh, that seemed, I didn't expect that out of this movie, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, it's, it's actually 1964. Okay. All right. Yeah. So to me, uh, I get the sixties and the seventies kind of squished together in some facets, right. you know, like some, the, the pop culture, like, I'm like, really, that was the, or I, I guess I would say the fifties and sixties, I yeah. would say some of that, like, I don't know. It gets mushed in my head where I'm like, I can't tell the difference between, you know, 1956 and 1964, I guess. Right. Yeah. And I've, I've actually, I've read that. I've read that short story. Okay. It's, uh, it's by uh, Richard Matheson. And um, that like, he's, he's a short, short story writer. And he's actually done a lot on, I guess he's done a lot on movies and TVs as well. But uh, he, that one, uh, was obviously the the most famous out of all the all the stories that he's done, and um, it's it's tough to you know I I I love the Omega Man I really enjoyed it. And, I've actually like, never they, watched that one. Oh really? But basically, what it is is that like uh, there was there was a disease that spread around that made everyone turn into vampires, and in the book it was like super scientific it it's just like you know why why th that they couldn't take sunlight and it had to do with like the melatonin they um the 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 disease was actually transforming their dna so like they couldn't take the sun and then why didn't they like garlic it's because of like there's certain <laughs> chemicals in in garlic that actually uh, cause like a uh, a chemical reaction to their blood um and, and then why didn't they look at the uh in mirrors because to do with like some kind of psychological thing oh that that's, they had that's cool yeah they just couldn't yeah. they couldn't handle it or like their brain yeah that's awesome yeah and basically what happened is that uh that that society he was he was the only obviously the last man on earth and uh, the society that was living existing outside they actually evolved and the the vampires they actually they ha had some intelligence and they were actually able to take a pill so they were able to uh, survive the sunlight and everything like that and they actually killed off like all the the the, the uh, rabid vampires and then they captured him because he was actually what happened is like during the day he would go get supplies and then he would hunt for all these vampires and kill them all and then throw them in the pit like you were saying and um and and now he became the uh the at the end you, he gets captured and they sentence him to death and he's like I, i'm the monster i'm the one that afraid of i'm the one that they talk to kids at night that you know to to be a you know, he said i am legend i'm the one that everyone talks about that i'm the you know i'm the boogeyman in, in the uh, closet that that people you know it's like if you don't you know, if you don't go to bed or don't eat your whatever, it's like he's gonna go out and and, and get you. You know, like the thing. So yeah, it's a it, it's a great it's a great short story. If you ever can see, uh, if you ever have a chance of seeing it, it's uh, or reading it, I should say, it's it's really good. And you said that was so it Matheson, Matheson, Richard Matheson, okay. M A T H E S O N, Matheson. Nice. Such a he's a pretty prolific uh, writer. So. I, I, there's, I know there's probably an explanation already, scientific ex explanation, but the garlic thing always makes me kind of laugh. <laughs> like yeah. out of all the things that get, get screw up a vampire, just yeah, get that garlic away from a man. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be something somebody's like retconned. I don't know where I, I'm not going to go. You know, we have computers in front of us, but we don't have time to right. look up that kind of stuff. But I'm like, no. I wonder what the origin of that. I'm gonna have to as soon as I get off here, I'm gonna all right, I'm writing a note. Garlic, YouTube. Yeah, it, it's all you know, it's all these like superstition things. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah that's mean? probably what it was born out of was something like that. Yeah, yeah, I, exactly, exactly. And with you know, the, like Oh go, go, sorry, go ahead. Go okay, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, like, you know how like there's certain fruits and vegetables that actually have uh like that that were believed to have like certain properties magical yeah. properties uh you know they said pomegranates are like the food of the gods and 
and all and things like that. So I, I feel maybe garlic was something like that. It was something to use to ward off evil, regardless. It it wasn't necessarily vampires. Maybe it was just like bad spirits in general. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah. Beca- it, you know, it got due to popular, you know, uh top you know, how popular vampires got, maybe they'll say, well, vampires are like the apex apex predator the apex evil that people should be afraid of and the garlic is the a number one against them or something you know same thing with like silver bullets with, oh yeah I with guess. werewolves you know that's true now that you bring it up i'm like what the yeah wait where did all this where did all this come from we'll do another show the, the yeah, we're yeah. turning into a uh cryptozoology myth uh <laughs> and mythos, show yeah. that's what we'll do um yeah, exactly yeah. well my favorite part of basically like all of those kind, just all of those movies in general and i literally if I went myself, there's a list, but they don't just give me a flat number. I, I was like, how many horror movies have been made? Yeah. Because I know it's a lot. And I was just looking at some numbers in like the 2000s were like, well, this year, 328 were made, 269. And that's like, you know, you think of the one or two that maybe pop up during the Halloween season or throughout right. the year that are blockbusters. But it's like, oh, yeah, there's all of these indie productions that are just bad me movies. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're just throwing stuff out, but it's still a horror movie. So I was just wondering, I'm like, there has to be, I don't know. It, it's just, it, there are so many, but my favorite part of all those movies. And that's why uh, we were talking evil dead too. And I actually, before this looked up on YouTube and was watching a documentary, it's just the, the special effects. That's what got me. And I always wanted right. to do like special effects work. I, I remember seeing like, Fangoria, and there was like the ads for like Tom Savini school, and I remember being like, "Oh, I could go there, and and yeah, I could, I could totally, I, I can start working in the movies." You know, one of my <laughs> million things as a kid, I right. couldn't decide on. Uh, but yeah, it was always the effects and the people that came out of Evil Dead um, Two. Uh, they went on to work in Army of Darkness, uh, mm-hmm. of course, but it was like the origins of KMB uh, Effects Studio, and uh, that is. I don't want to get their names incorrect again, uh, but it's Robert. Was it Robert uh, Kurtzman, Howard Berger, hmm. and uh, darn it, let me. Um... Oh yeah, Greg Nicotero, Howard Kurtzman. I should have had this pulled up at the right page, um, but it, basically, these three guys have gone on to do everything. They're most famously up to date now is Walking Dead. Right. doing all the effects for walking dead but they all uh well two of them met during um was it day of the dead it was in pittsburgh hmm. and basically this is where they kind of i believe solidified that they were going to be a company and right. were, they didn't do the company until a couple of years later but it was on evil dead 2 that all three of them worked together for a full you know movie so this movie that was innovative in you know so many ways with uh sam raimi who was just a comic goofball like he never even wanted to make the, the evil dead 2 i forgot right. about that he didn't they, bruce campbell rob tappert and sam raimi they moved on they did evil dead just to get their foot in the door that's the only reason right. they made a horror movie was just so they could start making movies and they right. did crime wave after that and um huh. <clears throat> that was their next big thing and that was a whole studio flop and there's a whole disastrous backstory to that movie but that failed and then basically made them go you know huh how about uh evil evil dead 2 because um i think yeah they didn't want to do it and then it was uh it might be conflating stories but it was the overseas numbers or something that convinced them like oh there's actually an audience for this but that that was uh probably one of my favorites because it's got some of the most slapsticky goofball gags in there like a an eyeball flying across a room from some monster's head that just got stomped and landing in a hillbilly girl's mouth. You know? right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that was basically my, my love for the, the horror movies was more the special effects and the animatronics and just the craziness of the monsters right. or, you know, not even monsters, just, um, just um, the kills, the, the, right. you know, the, even somebody just having a wound on the, <laughs> walking around with it, that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of funny you you talk about that because like when I was when I was younger, I it was it was like I was that uh, horror movies were like a big nope for me, you know, yeah. <laughs> like if 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 even if it was like broad daylight, you know, and that the sun is shining through the window and like a bunch of uh, you know we would go over a friend's house or something like that, and they're like, hey, let's go watch like 
Friday the 13th, I'll be like, nope. Oh, nope. look, there's a video game I can play. I'll go over there. You guys watch whatever you want. And, oh, okay. You know, it took it took me a long time. I I just I don't know why it 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 never it never interested me uh, horror movies. Um, you know, obviously we like growing up in in the eighties. You know, you had like those. You had the Star Wars and you had the Indiana Joneses. So it's it's not yeah. like you were you were starving for entertainment. You know, because there was so much stuff, and those were like the biggest movies ever you know so it's like yeah i i I just didn't i didn't really see the need of like oh well i I gotta watch horror movies and it wasn't until you know much later in the in the college or whatever that's oh all the way in college well yeah you know like you know your friends in high school you know i I would watch a horror movie here and there but like it it wasn't really i i I never i never gravitated towards all that until like probably like college time or something like that you know we would watch like the omen the Omen series or something mm. and and like you know and then I'm like oh well this is not really that bad you know the story is actually pretty good and then um we have a friend of ours who was like obsessed with and I when I say obsessed I say obsessed <laughs> with Rosemary's baby really yes and it has to do with like how it was shot um, I totally I totally get that I got it I yeah. actually only saw it recently uh, for the first right. time and i was like wow the cinema the cinematography the imagery the right just subtle stuff you didn't catch but then i would watch a video about it i'm like oh you know yeah yeah i i, I want to say like that you I try to remember how to go and i can't remember off the top of my head but i think it's like either like the director or the uh the cinematographer or something like that they came from broadway so they lit it like as if it was a broadway play i think that's one of the things i remember hearing yeah yeah so you you'll see a lot of those remember the like the the light that does like the slot of like just just showing the eyes or something like that like that's a that's a very broadway thing of like just showing like like concentrate like the the shiftiness or like the, the emotions of a person, you know, they say, you know, I, the eyes are the window of the, of the soul type of thing. And they want to want everyone to concentrate on that particular thing. I guess the, uh, the best uh, modern version, modern with, uh, with uh, quotations would be um, the Adams family. Um, 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 I, now I'm blanking on her name. What's the wife, uh, the mother. Morticia. Morticia. Yeah. When they would go into yeah. Angela Houston, Angela. Houston, and, and, yep. Yeah. Is it Angela? Angela, I can't even yeah. say Angela. Jesus, Angela. Um, yeah. But yeah, they go into those shots, and she'd have the just stark light across the eyes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you know, funny enough, like that's what we're going to be doing <laughs> for uh, Halloween this year. Oh, really? Um, I'm going to be. Yeah, we're we're like us uh, cross franchise thing here. Like I'm I'm going to be dressing up as um, uh, Gomez. Uh, Gomez Adams and Han Solo. So we're going to be Gomez Solo. <laughs> and and my wife is going to be Morticia uh, Organa. Uh, the other thing. So, so wait, she's so got to have, have the like buns, the big, but she's gothed yeah, out. I think it's all black. Yeah. And I'm going to 100% in like a Han Solo costume with like the mustache and the, and the black hair off to the side with like the paste and the, and the gaunt eyes and everything. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I can't do the cigars though. I don't want the kids to get a you know get an idea or whatever. But yeah, we're uh, we're gonna be doing that. <laughs> that nice. I I can never I, with paint face paint and stuff. I always end yeah. up regretting it because you. I mean, at least me, the parties I was going to when I was doing Halloween parties of that nature, it was you'd always right. leave not in the best condition, and then you have yeah, to yeah you have to go home and get the stuff off before you can make it to your bed, <laughs> you know, right. or, else, yeah. or, or you're leaving a trail, uh, the whole night of touching things, touching your face, right. then touching a wall <laughs> and leaving. Right. 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 Yeah. But I think well, the last I'm, intense it, one I did was I was Doyle, uh, from the misfits and I, uh, oh, okay. I did that for a Halloween concert. Actually me and yeah, me, Sean and uh, another buddy played, uh, just a three piece and did some misfits covers. And I just, I dressed as Doyle and man, I I had long yeah. hair at the time, like almost you know, like maybe almost to my shoulders, and everybody thought it was fake because I just like hair sprayed it up, and then yeah, pulled it all forward, and then oh, I didn't I didn't God. know he uses little tiny rubber bands. I just sprayed the crap out of this long yeah. hair amount, you know, just uh, devil lock I made in the front. But I just remember regretting having this face paint on. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It, it, it's not oh, it's amazing. not a good choice. I mean, unless you're yeah. a um, 
you're easy on the uh, booze while you're wearing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's uh, funny that you bring that up. I have a, a high school memory. There was one. He was into. He was a goth punk, and he had a devil lock. Oh yeah. And but I I don't I never knew his name. I always knew everybody called him Cobra. And, but I never knew what his name was. So, Cobra, if you're listening, yeah. uh, Cobra, hit us up, uh, Dan and Ian Pod at gmail.com. I doubt, it. Um, I doubt um, it. I mean, maybe some of the kids from my uh, from my high school they might remember. Oh, him, somebody's but, gonna like, hear this oh. and gonna be like, Cobra, I remember him. Yeah. Uh, I could tell. I could tell you some some funny stories about about him. Yeah, we'll <laughs> but, do that afterwards. I don't. I don't want some guy coming after us. <laughs> you no, know, no, no. It's, it's it's all good. Sweet and innocent. Uh, but Steve anyways, Buscemi uh, uh, writing. Turn around and uh, crossing off your name on the wall. I'm crossing off, yeah. Here, I want some start. You. <laughs> oh, wait, so, um, wait, wait, wait. You uh, cut out there. Sorry. Oh, um, uh, yeah. I apologize. Uh, so for a good, oh man, um, till last year, we would, uh, my wife and I would go to a Halloween party where um, a host would actually rent karaoke equipment. He would car- uh, hire a DJ. He would just have us, we would run it ourselves and everybody would get dressed up and get all hand and we start singing songs in a, the most worst of ways. And but every year we would, everybody would have like the most interesting costumes because everybody tends to go out because they know that, you know, they're not going to be doing anything on Halloween. So yeah. they kind of go all out uh, <clears throat> on, you know, the Saturday or whatever the uh, Sunday before Halloween. And uh, yeah, we would we would dress up into like all things. Yeah. All right. So I I just wanted to see. Actually, why don't we start with you, Ian? Do you, do you have like a, a an event or maybe a good Halloween that you had, or like do you just have like just general good feelings about it? But like, do you have anything that sticks out out of your mind uh, uh, when it when it comes to Halloween? I mean, like uh, memories. It would just be, yeah, like you said, in general, um, you know, growing up, my grandma, um, they lived in one neighborhood for the years and years, decades and decades. Everybody was on the west side of Columbus at the hilltop, hilltop. And uh, it was basically <laughs> just, it was just classic Halloween. You know, you get let loose. You're in a group of people, kids. I was the youngest, so. I would uh, probably end up being the one they were trying to leave behind, you know, right. <laughs> the annoyance, uh, which I deserved it. Believe me, I was not a good kid. Uh, but I, uh, <laughs> can you believe that? Um, I can't. But uh, it was just basically being, you know, my grandma's house was the center of f- like family stuff in my head. You know, I don't know if family members would listen to this and say, oh, I don't know. But in my head, it was like the hub, uh, you know, right. my grandma and grandpa you know, lived in this neighborhood, the whole family, it was like every Saturday, everybody would get together at the house, you know, basically it was like mini family reunion slash party. You know, I know my family, they were partying hard. We were kids. We didn't care. That's why we got to run around everywhere. But Halloween, it was just that whole neighborhood running around, uh, you know, some year, like one time, I just remember being dressed as, I think I was like a Planet of the Apes. I, I, I look at back at the pictures. I was like, what was I trying to pull? I got a monkey mask on and fatigues. I was like, is this Planet of the Apes? It was like trying to do <laughs> something here. But like, you know, laying in the front yard in a fake box or whatever. And, you know, our, our low level scare, my grandma sitting there with the bowl of candy next to me, just going, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <You> yeah. <know? laughs> but, uh, and then, um, you know, the stories of, uh, like, I remember one of my, uncle's talking about on his way over there cutting through the alley and some kids were cutting he was dra- dressed as i believe um, michael myers <laughs> and the kids <laughs> drop drop their candy and ran and i swear to god i don't know if this is a story or if i remember i swear he came with a bag like two bags of candy like pillowcases because <laughs> these kids <laughs> saw him in the alley drop their stuff and ran just for their ran lives like <laughs> but it was just basically halloween was cool because it was yeah I mean, childhood back then was a lot. I mean, even for my age, everybody probably that knows me is laughing like, you're not that old. But I mean, even my lifetime has changed, you know, just being let let loose. And Halloween was like the ultimate, like, let loose, you know. You're out after dark. You don't have to, you know, it's understood that you guys are, you know, every once in a while, check back at the house, do a candy dump or something and uh, get a drink, you know, and then take off. And uh, 
it was just the freedom and then of course dressing like something you know trying to figure out what your costume is going to be what am i going to be what are you going to do and uh my aunt actually my aunt cheryl um she would be like the lifesaver for a lot of like last minute stuff because she would keep everybody's costumes and put them in a box Huh. Like, I, mean, I remember maybe one, uh, like one or two boxes she kept, like, for a little bit at least, you know, as a kid. I'm like, she did it forever, but it was probably like, you know, probably a couple of years worth of stuff at the time. But going through that and like pulling out wigs and like, oh, look at this dress shirt or, you know, this jacket and like throwing together like something just to be able to run around the neighborhood if I didn't okay. already have some kind of a Star Wars. You know, I don't know if I ever did it. I think I did Darth Vader one year. That was about, I think that's my only Star Wars costume. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like uh, growing up uh, in the in the town of where that I grew up when I grew up in uh, Weymouth, and uh, you know it's a blue collar place, and uh, but there there are some like quiet areas. There's a there used to be like there was like a whole old um, like uh, neighborhood that was just off from where I lived. It was called like Apple Tree Lane, and then it would branch out into all these other streets and we would just go for all like all night long we would just go trick-or-treating right up until they until it was over yeah and then someone we would have like candy upon candy and that was like complete (laughs) utter madness like the place that we were at and i remember even like during like torrential downpours we're like you know you know frigate we're we're going we're still going we're getting the, <laughs> we're getting our candy doesn't matter mother nature is raining on us we don't give a damn we're gonna go get a we're gonna get everything that we want you know and uh those those were always fun um and then once we got into like uh high like college you know obviously you have a lot more freedom people kind of stay around but we we actually started having kind of a tradition with with my group of friends we would actually travel up to salem um, either like the the day before Halloween or the day of Halloween, we would go there once a year. We did it for like at least three or four years straight. We would just go. We we had a place where we would park where like not a lot of people knew about, and then we just you know wander in and just like have a grand old time there, just checking out like all people's crazy costumes. That was a lot of fun going into Salem. That was that's always like the. Uh, happiness place to be it's uh it, it it really is like it's like burning man but you know a little bit warmer more close <laughs> but now on that one growing up in that you know i, I say general it's a, the whole state but you know it, growing up close that close to it were you did any of that stuff like really fall flat on you like yeah 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 the witches blah 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 like it did or was it still like the historic value and what happened there and that did yeah did you still appreciate it or was it you know what i'm you know what i'm saying right yeah no i i know what you're trying to say um just because you you've gone there so many times that the 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 shine is not a not as shiny as it as it, yeah yeah you know, if i was from a distance or something like that yeah you, you know um it, it, it's one of those things where um, it, it has its and you know, oh, I'm sorry, wait, it, it has its what? It has its charm. Oh, it's charm. Sorry. You know, it has its charms. And, you know, when we were even in, in, you know, in school, we would go up and do field trips up there. Yeah. And we would go to the Salem Witch Trial Museum and, you know, go to the, go to the, the different grave sites in that area you know, it, it was, it was one of those things where you, you know, it was a history, but also it was very commercial. Um, and so you, you tend to like, you tend to know when not to go there and you know, when to show up there and all that. And I, 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 I always, I always liked it. Um, it, and it, it holds a special place in my heart cause it's always fun to go there. Um, but I, I feel that like everybody, at least once in their life should go to it and just enjoy what it is and, and all that fun stuff. And, you know, like, like I said, you know, we have, we have friends that live in the area. They have like a cool, uh, cool bar there called pixels. And it's like a, it's a arcade as well as a uh, bar. So you can play video games while you're like getting hammered, which is always good. And yeah. Yeah. Good there too. We got, we got something similar to that, but yeah, it's not as cool. Probably I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just a, uh, it's a hole in the wall with some, uh, with some arcades. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's like it's like a needle for uh, for odd people, you know, people who are who are appreciative either towards like horror, 
or uh, you know the historic like they want to explain uh, the real true meaning of Wiccan and and witches and, and you know they have that and then also now they have the uh, the the satanic temple that's there oh now, that's right you know, we so. discussed about making a trip there definitely when I come out yeah I'm, I'm I might actually go up in November uh, and and check the place out you know uh, they the the people that are there seem like they're just generally like cool people. So I, I'm pretty sure they'll be down for like, you know, me asking dumbass questions about whatever, you know? So. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say they, they seem, <clears throat> I mean, the true uh, Satanist, they, they see it's in a way, and I know I'm going to get slapped. Uh, and I can't feel the people slapping me out in podcasting, yeah. but they're kind of like the hippies of that, <laughs> you know, they're, well, they're pretty they're, like, don't like, mess with me. I won't mess with you. Don't harm other people. Don't, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. They were, they were more like a, a political body than anything else. Yeah, you know? they, they, they're, they're the, are they the libertarians? <laughs> <laughs> well, they they it, you have to you have to see. There's a documentary called Satan, and at the end it has a question mark. Oh, and it, it explains like yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and it and it it follows them the reason essentially why they created this group, and it's more like a. a it's something to oppose uh, for, um, you know, Christian fundamentals who wanted more Christianity in government. And it's, it's not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be separation of church and state and all that fun stuff. So, um, but I highly suggest seeing that, that uh, documentary is really good. Uh, but yeah, that, that's, you know, and I'm really surprised there, there are actually a lot of people that I know that are like, I've never been to Salem and it's like, what are you talking about? You yeah. know? So yeah. And they live um, there. I, yeah. You're like, you know, wait, how did you never make it over there? I know, and you know, and it's really like 45 to an hour drive from where I live. So it's like, there's no excuse. You should not be, you know, not going up there and actually checking the place out, you know. But yeah, north, there, there are north people to, out there. North to south travel isn't that far from state to state, right? From like, yeah. from edge edge of uh, mass, you know, north and south. It's not that far. That. Yeah, it's it's not that bad, you know. Um, you you can probably go. I, I want to say maybe three hours. Maybe yeah, I was going to say I, it looks to me like a trip to Columbus, like two and a half hours or so. Yeah, yeah, you know, like border to border, probably like that. You know, like just going going up to New Hampshire, like we did over the summertime. It was only like a three hour, maybe yeah, about three hour drive going going up to where we want where we were. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, but anyways, uh, you know, I'm really surprised that, that there are people like even in my area that have never been to Salem before, and I'm like, what are you doing? You know, I'm like, <laughs> we got to go and do this trip, and I got to show you this, 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 and this, and it's like, I'm like, how do you not know about your own state's heritage and all that fun <laughs> stuff? But you know, uh, but you know, well, I'll do, I'll do this real quick. So, uh, and then I have one more last memory, and that's actually I was I got married on Halloween. Oh, yes, I know. Very, very touching. Uh, and it, you know what? And my wife didn't really fight <laughs> about that either. So. Oh, so that wasn't she something was that. that wasn't uh, like a thing like you got you knew for sure. Or was that your idea? Uh, well, I, I, I said, I'm like, why don't we get married on Halloween? You know, it's like we both like Halloween. We both enjoy it, you know, and uh, and she she said, yeah, she was down with that. But originally uh, she was like, well, how about like Columbus weekend? And I'm like, I can't I can't do that. <laughs> I can't like, be that not? close. Well, well, because uh, I have one of my one of my good friends. He was he was one of my uh, groomsmen. He uh, he was a like a manager for Hot Topic. And every year they would have like a Hot Topic, like um, like corporate thing and he would have to fly out to like wherever they were having it and every year they had like a a themed uh party and i, I if i remember correctly it was a uh like a musician theme party or something and you know they, they he wasn't he was going to be able to make it so i, I was think like, those no, corporate events to uh those hot topic corporate events i believe they're called raves oh is that right? what it is yeah yeah they just, know, yeah <laughs> no I have no clue, but yeah, I got, I got married, uh, you know, about 90% of our guests got dressed up. You know, we, we had a couple of Indiana Joneses, you know, we had, uh, we had uh, someone who dressed up like, uh, Marge and Homer Simpson. Oh know? man, that's a commitment. <laughs> yeah. I was just, my, or I was complaining about a little, just my face being covered. I'm guessing a lot of that's a lot of paint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, my, my step, mother's uh daughter's family the 
the whole family dressed up like different Batman characters. So the husband dressed up like Batman. Um, my sister dressed up like Catwoman. Um, two of my nephews dressed up like uh, the the Riddler. And um, one of them dressed up like the Joker, Two-Face, you know? So it's like everybody just really dived right into it and, and really enjoyed themselves. And that's really what it was. It's like uh, we, we always joke around. It's like um, a, a party. We, we organized a party and a wedding happened. You know, because yeah. <laughs> it's like we're we're just there for for a good time. Yeah, know? and that's so. the best kind. I mean, especially on Halloween when they can let loose in that way and wear a costume of some sort. But any kind of wedding where it's just like, all right, here we're we're gonna do this. You know, all right, now everybody go get food and just hang right. out. <laughs> that kind yeah. of thing. The the formalities where it sucks. So you scored double double points. Yeah, and you know, like each each of the um, the tables that people were assigned to, they were all horror movie. Uh, themed tables mm -hmm. and so like uh we ours were so i married an axe murderer <laughs> harriet <laughs> yeah harriet yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh and the food choices was like uh chicken or fish and i i found images of a uh radioactive fish and a zombie <laughs> chicken oh and all for the menu <laughs> Those, those were like the tags that people have on each of their, like on the, uh, where they were sitting on the table. Oh, they like put the little placards out or like. Yeah, the placards so that they like wanted the, chicken or fish. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we did that. And then um, for our uh, wedding favors, we gave everybody uh, Chinese food takeout uh, boxes that were full of candy because we're like, so sorry that you had to miss like your Halloween outing. You know, here you go. Uh, yeah, you know. here's all your candy. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you know it's funny. Even to like this day, my nephew still said like the, that's like the best wedding I've ever gone to, and I have like tainted every other wedding they've ever been to because it's like <laughs> not as good as yours. I mean, and it's it's got to be awesome, especially if they love you guys and they want to be yeah. there. And it's an added like, oh, you know, uh, oh, we get to do this on top of it. Everybody gets to right. be you know goofy, you know, or whatever, and like just have a good time. That's that's yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's like that was the 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 big memory of uh, Halloween. So, uh, but now 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 we have uh, we have a little bit of a bonus that I've heard. Is oh yes, yes. Uh, it was an an extra question from uh, James Lurgio of yeah. Count Orlock's Nightmare Gallery. Yeah, he was uh he was actually nice enough. We we had to uh had we had to have him come back uh for a little bit of a correction that uh that happened uh the from the original recording i will take and, ownership it was all my fault and uh yeah. my, my my end failed and we lost about five minutes of a conversation but i believe he switched it up and made it so good like i think he even made the story uh kind of even more engaging because uh yeah if you're listening and you couldn't tell that's that's why is he's a good <laughs> storyteller he is a very good storyteller, and uh, he was actually really gracious enough to uh, to you know answer some more questions that we had after we finished that session. So uh, here we go. We got we got a little bit of more a uh, little more of the interview for of James Lurgio of the Count Orlark Nightmare Gallery for you. So uh, here you go. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, all right. All right. If I can, out of that, can I ask one more question before you get? Yes. What was that first piece that you collected? <clears throat> I can show it to you. Uh -oh. oh. Nice. I can show it to you. Would you like right. to see it? Yes. yes. Absolutely. All right. Oh, there he is. I can't. I can't show it to you. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was in this room, but I oh. think it's outside in the carriage house and. That's a whole other thing. I'd be gone for several minutes at a time. <laughs> Jeez. You might, yeah, you might get lost for a while. There we go. Yeah. See if I did. Um, but, but without oh, seeing. That's terrible. Can you. Uh... So it was a. Uh, it, well, it was actually slightly before this. It was like 1986, 87. My mom was taking me into uh, the uh, some mall, maybe Rhode Island Mall or something. And there was a kiosk in the middle of the mall. And they held all these amazing masks. And I. Uh, pointed to one that I really liked. It was the, a werewolf, very much in the Lon Chaney style of, of werewolves. And it was um, mostly fabric hair with a little latex face that had a little underbite and little, you know, the whole werewolf, wolf man thing. And a very long bit of fabric hair that went right down to like my navel. So you could just 
tuck it right into your right. shirt there. <laughs> and that was, I think, one of, if not the first mask that I have. Um, I, I, I would show it to you. I found it again uh, recently at my parents' house. I was mm. cleaning stuff out. I, I should have done this a long time ago. I'm a grown man who had not actually completely moved out of his parents' house when I actually moved out when I was not like you got a, Yeah, right. Who like does? you don't have a place you can maybe take that. I, I have a lot of stuff. I have a lot of places. <laughs> I could have stashed that many years ago, but instead I said, no, mom, no, you hold I'm on. not going to take it to my place. I'm going to keep it here and you're just going to have to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> and until she said, I don't want to deal with it anymore. And that's, and that's why I have it somewhere. It's, I think it's in the carriage house. So that's, um, I don't believe there's any actual face left. It's just this molded, melted oh, man. little brown blob with a lot of fabric hair. <laughs> oh, no. but I, 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 want to, I want a picture of that. I want to see I, a picture of I that. I may have a photo of it somewhere, uh, oh. but now that not I think about that, might actually be something that my parents have. And I don't. <laughs> That's great. Well, I, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, for, thank you very uh, much. My pleasure. If there are any other questions, I'm available for the next uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> no, I think, yeah, I think we're good for now, but uh, definitely, okay. we definitely want you to, we will definitely have you come back. Um, cool. Maybe like November or something like that. And you can kind of like uh, retell the, the experience of, you know, how is it like to run a, run a museum like that during the most like haunted month of the year where it's like pretty much Salem is Halloween ground zero. You it know is. the experience of of being there. So, yeah. but um, I I don't know. Will you be? Are you going to be there? You you got. You're not going to be there November first, right? You're 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 not going. That is a there. Monday, and yeah. I have uh, in historically I have tried to avoid that. Oh, okay. On November first, Monday. No, I don't think I'll be there. Okay. At least I don't think I will. Well, tra um, uh, traditionally, we usually go up to Salem actually the day after. I know. I yeah. remember seeing you guys there a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we uh, just I'll just check if you don't you don't have to make a make a special effort with us. But uh, I will, me, me and I are going to take that day off and like go up and just chill. If I'm there, I won't say uh, you can't come in. How's that? Uh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, if, if you could like. Um, whenever you have the chance because what we would do is well probably this question we maybe we'll do it as like a bonus thing you know as like okay. an extra you know and if, if you have a photo of it then we can like we can post it up on there with it and <laughs> it, that'd be it's great not, it's not going to show very well i don't it's just this blobby it's thing a pile of latex I, you know it makes down. it even more because like I, I, and I'll, I'll be real quick about it but they're, they're like everybody has in their collection and i always ask that question is like what's the most like personal thing that you have? And it doesn't have to be like the most valuable, but it has like the most memory to it. And like, I always say, I have like this Millennium Falcon, this uh, metal Millennium Falcon that is like broken and beaten and everything like that. But I've had it since I was like a kid, mm -hmm. like a small kid. So it's like, I can't bear to get rid of it. So it's kind of like what your, your mask, you can't bear to like get rid of it. Yes. No, it's very difficult to get rid of things. I mean, there are some things that um, I actually recently, um, did a trade uh, with a guy who had something that I really wanted. And it was something that, that is rare that I don't usually do very often because the artist actually is still making these things. Mm. Um, but he's, he's busy or he doesn't want to do it or something, whatever. He is virtually unavailable and unreachable as much as I bug him on Instagram right and I've talked to him before about this thing it's just for whatever reason he's not taking money and producing these things at the moment right. so this other guy that I talked to had one and I said oh I really want that and he would not take money for it but he happens to collect a thing that I have uh quite a bit of or had quite a bit of well have more or less um an artist named Harry Inman who has since passed on and uh, Harry just produced a lot of very cool monsters, most of which were from his own imagination and a few likeness monsters as well. But mm. I have had a lot in my collection and he had his eye on something special. And it was the thing that was right in that spot, mm -hmm. but is not there any longer. And so after uh, having this thing since 1996, I said, 
I think I have to let it go. Uh, I was not using it. And the thing right. that he had, I was going to be using probably before the end of the month. Okay. So I traded him. And uh, and so that, that story that you told me uh, made me think, do I have anything that is so personal that I will never sell it? Right, yeah. And I can't think of anything that is made for the museum that falls under that category, which well, maybe, is really weird. Maybe like the personal letters of, you know, Vincent Price or something like that. You know, the little letters that you have. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I mean, if, but yeah, if yeah. someone were to offer me a gazillion dollars for them, not that okay. they're worth that much, yeah. I might sell them. That's true. Um, That's true. Yeah. <clears throat> but in, but in the end, yeah, I think the stuff that I that I value more than monsters is antiques yeah i will get that's who i am today right um i'm i'm an um, an antique antique. collector who who uses uh my love and passion for monsters to fuel my my antique collection (laughs) um which may or may not be expanding soon with oddity collections oh really yes nice i have have a small oddity collection very small right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i'd like to um expand it Oh, and uh, and if that is something that uh, is in the in the in the stars, then then I, I may be expanding it to quite a bit. All right. Well, we got to talk. We got to talk to you about that too. Your oddity collection that you that you have. I would love yes. to. I love to hear the stories on those. That's for sure. Yes. <laughs> you would, yes. wouldn't you? I own. I let me tell you, just just a brief teaser. Okay, for next time, mm. I own four skulls, not including this one. Oh. <laughs> not, and not I've either. only paid for one of them. Whoa. Bum, mm. bum, bum. The rest he dug up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just it's it's hard work, but you can you can dig and dig and dig and then right, you, no, that's how only, you get them. There's only yeah. so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well it's well just, save yeah. Whoop, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say save those. <laughs> okay. They they will the the stories and the questions we'll be asking you. We're definitely going to be uh, coming back to you for sure. You're going to be a, a repeat, yeah, with that, repeat offender. Uh, or I'll guess, try and I like myself say. better next time, too. No, you don't have to. It's okay. <laughs> it's a little less. It'll be great. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, put a hat, put a hat on, you know, wear one of those masks. I think that will be more impressive. <laughs> okay. All right. Just muffled the whole time. <laughs> yeah. I can, I can certainly that's all in the interview then. Uh oh. There you go. <laughs> can we hear you i wonder good to see you guys oh wow actually uh, nice. you sound better you sound better <laughs> you look a lot better too thank you <laughs> uh, all right well good, good night good sirs thank you very much uh james i really appreciate this um and we'll we'll talk to you very soon and once again you know uh give you uh give our love to mark and and to max so i will thank you see you guys right. soon have all a good right. night stay safe Happy halloween happy halloween, happy halloween. Bye. Bye. How do I get out? <laughs> I, I, I like this is at the end of the other one too. I know. We're, which, we're, which button do I push? And now he doesn't I'm, have his glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't have my glasses and I can't see. I love this. <laughs> get out. Leave. Oh, leave. Okay, leave. there's the button. I, I see it right there. Go Bye. away. Meeting. <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you for listening, and have a great night. And, uh, of course, uh, coming up, have a happy Halloween. Lightning bolt, lightning bolt. (laughs) You know what I mean. (laughs) Have a good night. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions or suggestions, write to us at danandianpod at gmail.com. Or search Dan and Ian Have Questions podcast on Facebook. Intro music provided by Ian Savage. Music produced and recorded by Sean Vanek at Mercenary Studios. Thanks again for listening and see you next time.